Mr. Corsi here. I'm going to show you how to construct the Penrose tiles, the kite and the dart, using the open source free software called Inkscape. Now when you open, after downloading it, when you open Inkscape, this is what you get, a new document with a A4 page shown. I'm going to make a few adjustments first. First of all, this button up here, where you can edit properties of the document, we're going to get rid of the page border and we're going to change millimeter units, both of these into pixels. Also, the view, the zoom, will place us one to one. So, to construct the first tile, we're going to base it on a straight line. Here's the Bezier tool. One click, and there's a guideline appears. If I press the control button down, the guideline changes in chunks of 15 degrees. That's built into the first document when you open it, and it moves 15 degree chunks, but there's the horizontal, it's locked onto the horizontal. Couple of clicks now, and there's our line. Choose the Select tool, and there's our line. I'd like that to be 300 pixels. We can check up here. The width is 287 pixels. Just type in 300. So I now have our first line. What I'd like to do is leave that line there. That's going to form one of the sides of our Penrose tile. And let's duplicate that line, Control D. Nothing appears to happen. Let's use the up arrow. There's the copy. If I do a shift up arrow, it moves it faster a larger distance each time. So let's get it back to where it was. Click it again and you get rotation handles. If I grab this one, you'll see that the rotation center is right in the middle of that line and I can rotate it any size of an angle. If I then press the control key, again, the 15 degree chunks appear. If I do that rotation while holding the shift key down, you notice that the center of rotation has shifted to the end of the line. And if you continue holding the shift key down and then can the control key, that rotation appears in chunks of 15 degrees. Now what I want, because the Penrose tile has angles of 72 degrees, three of them, and the fourth angle is 144 degrees. I'm wanting that 15 degree chunk to change, and I'm going to use a chunk of 36 degrees. So we go up to this button here where it says Edit Global Inkscape Preferences. Under the Behaviour heading, we go down to Steps, and there we can see our rotation snaps every 15 degrees and I would change that to 36 degrees. And now holding the shift key down and the control key down using the rotation handle, handle there's my rotation 36 degrees. So we'll leave a copy there, control D to duplicate that, hold shift control down again, another 36 degrees. So there's my framework that now has the vertices of my Penrose tile. One of them's there, second one's there, third one's there, and the fourth one's there. So I'm now going to trace out the first of the Penrose tiles using the Bezier tool. And you notice when I hover over, I get Handle to Cusp node. If that doesn't appear, then you haven't got this 
snapping tool activated. Notice it says here enable snapping. If you click that, that these other snapping properties automatically are turned on. And these are enough for us just now to deal with. So you hover over this, the Bezier tool again, hover over this node, and as soon as you get the label, click. Here's a label again, click, and just work your way round. And when you get back to the first vertex, the little square turns red, and when you click in that, your circuit is complete. Select. Let's move that out the way. There's the first of the two Penrose tiles. So let's build the second of the two Penrose tiles, the one that's called the Dart. And to do that, we go to the Bezier tool again, hover over this node, one click, two clicks. And there we have a new line has appeared. We're going to rotate this line about this point using this handle. Click it again to get the rotation handles. I use my shift key to make sure if I'm rotating by this handle, the center appears at this end of the, the rotation center appears at this end of the line. Also hold down the control key to make sure that the rotation is in a chunk of 36 degrees. So let's rotate that line. There we have it. This is the node that we require for the dart shape. So let's go back to the Bezier tool and create a circuit. One click when the label appears. And only one click here. Select tool and let's check that that's OK, then there it is. Move it along using the arrow keys with the shift key down. And let's get rid of all the scaffolding. So these two shapes are the outlines of the Penrose tiles. Now, a little digression. Let's copy these two shapes and zoom out a bit. Let's play around with these for a minute, and I'll show you why this isn't the whole of the picture for Penrose tiles. Let's rotate this tile round so that it fits into this other one. And we have a rhombus. We can duplicate that. Don't worry about how I'm doing this. It's just to demonstrate the fact that if this was all there was, the Penrose tiles, then they would be just like any other tile. You can see by doing this, I can easily tile the plane in a regular pattern. The wonder of these Penrose tiles is that they can tile the plane, but not in any regular pattern. That's what makes these so special. So obviously they cannot be fitted together edge to edge as they are. There has to be some further constraint on the way they fit together. And that therefore uh, leads us to the last element of building the picture properly. And the best way to do the constraint is to draw arcs of circles in these. And if we have two different colours of arcs of circles, then the matching becomes quite clear. And when we do put edge to edge, we have to match the patterns. So I will do that in part two of this video. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out and hope to see you in part two 